Hello, this is Ronnie from YouTube and I want to talk in this video about a transition plan to going raw. That means a 100% raw food diet for a human where you are eating only raw food, no cooked food for an entire year or for the rest of your life or whatever. But what I want to talk about is the transition process towards it and let, well, let's first talk about why raw food. Well, every animal on the planet, every biological organism, everything that lives, eats f food in a raw, unprocessed state. It only processes that food as much as it can physically do so. So we chew our food, obviously we break it down in our stomach and so on. And these are all obviously systems of processing and breaking down food. But they are natural systems that are part of our bio biology and, and, and in line with obviously our nature. Um, what this suggests, this pattern in nature of every animal eating raw food, is that human beings should also have a diet that we can eat raw, that we can, have, we can go out somewhere and live in a place or an area and live entirely on a raw diet just like every single creature on the planet lives, and, or at least at some point our ancestors did that. To investigate what that diet would be, uh, we would then look at um, our anatomy and different, different things that would suggest what those foods are that we're best designed for. And we can simply look at the animals that are most like us and that have a similar digestive design. And these animals are all... Are all uh, primates or apes and we are a primate we are an ape an anthropoid ape so we don't have a tail like a monkey we, we can walk on two legs we're an anthropoid ape and the closest animals to us chimpanzees orangutans uh, bonobos and things like that they all eat mostly fruit when they're able to they are fruit eaters and fruit is the food that is the most pleasing to us to look at in a completely unprocessed state. It is the most delicious food in a completely raw state. It is actually delicious, not just palatable, but it is enjoyable for us to eat and sweet and enjoyable. And it is a food that we would be easily able to obtain and open. And our eyesight suggests that our eyes have been have evolved to see colour to pick out fruit in the forest. Our hands are designed to open fruits. The way that our brain memorizes location suggests that we are able to map out a forest and remember different areas where fruit is. That's how we find food, um, not how an, a meat eater or a carnivore would find food, by smelling it and tracking it down. We don't have the ability to do that because we're, we're not meat eaters. So human, so the idea behind all that is that it's a natural, it's a it's a it's a natural diet, it's a species specific diet. But that wouldn't be good enough. You couldn't just say, well, it's a natural diet, so therefore it's better. That's not true. Uh, that's called an appeal to nature fallacy. But the question is, do we have any evidence that suggests that raw food is better than cooked food? Well, the first part of evidence we have is that basically for every nutrient, for every vitamin, we know that there's a certain threshold at which these vitamins start to uh, start to become destroyed and denatured, and therefore are, are, we're unable to actually access them or, or, or uh, digest them. So, and those temperatures tend to be within the range for most of these vitamins and different things. They tend to be in the range that um, that food is cooked at. They tend to be in that kind of a range, uh, so things, so many of these uh, vitamins will be destroyed or damaged just at the kind of temperatures that people generally cook food at. So that's a problem. We do diminish nutrients. We do create toxic uh, or problematic chemicals and substances when we cook food. Um, we derange and denature food, so it causes damage to food. Um, at the same time, the benefit of it is that certain foods that we could not eat raw, we can eat cooked. So it allows us to survive 
It's been an important strategy in survival for humans. But when we have the option to choose any food, it would make sense that we would go towards the food that really nourishes us the best. And there's no doubt that fruits and vegetables are the number one foods. These are the foods that we should eat more of. These are the foods that are the best for us. We wouldn't disagree, no one would disagree with that. So fruits and vegetables um, in, in, in every sense are the best foods for us and we should eat more of them. Uh, cooking damages food. Uh, cooking creates carcinogenic compounds in some instances and we don't we don't want to take in any more of those. And it really allows us to consume foods that we wouldn't be able to eat raw. And uh, animals have evolved to have various adaptations that allow that that make it easy for them to eat certain foods, the foods that they are biologically designed to eat, and they are restricted from eating foods that they're not able to eat. So if you try and give fruit or a banana to a chicken, the chicken wouldn't really know what to do and couldn't really uh, open the banana and so on. But as anthropoid primates, with hands, with, with fingers, we know how to open them up and the enzymes in our mouth are able to digest um, or start the digestion process for fruit. So we are frugivores and whether you want to embrace that or not, you should embrace the idea that if you want to be healthier you should eat more fruit and not eating enough fruit actually causes millions of deaths every year. People just not eating enough fruit and enough fruit is actually put to a, you know, a very low level. It's not it's not at the level that it should be. It's at a very low level and people don't reach that and they inevitably suffer health consequences. So human beings, so a, a raw diet is just the extension of that where we actually say, well, what if we just cut out all the stuff that has, you know, some badness to it, <laughs> to put it very simply, that has some problems, some badness, some of it leads towards disease and problems over time. You know, there's no there's no food in the supermarket that that is going to give you a disease with with eating at one time. It's not going to happen. But over time, we're going to have a relationship with our food over time. Do you want to develop a relationship that continues to support you over time or not? So, uh, to be the idea of going raw became fascinating to me because I just thought well, how would you feel if you just ate the best diet ever if, if you just tried to go towards the healthiest foods all the time because I'd experimented with changing my diet making it healthier making it a little bit better each time and feeling really big differences and I thought it was really worth it and then eventually it just got to me like what if you just ate the best that you could you know so let me talk about the the raw transition, the pro, the, the process of transition towards a raw vegan diet. Some people say that they've transitioned overnight, and I, um, I know a couple of people that have said that, and a couple of people that have said, well, you know, when I make a decision, I just never go back, and, and things like that. The reality is, for most people, you will not go raw overnight. Um, and it's very to me that's very rare and I think it usually involves I don't know it's like it's like how many people become a Christian after they go to a church for the first time or how many people um, I don't know I'm just trying to think of different things where like the first time a person tries something that they all of a sudden you know, you go into a guitar shop or a music shop, do you become a guitar player just, you know, because you've bought a guitar, I don't know. Like, it takes time to develop, to, to even commit to the thing. So, I believe that the transition for most people takes time, and that time could be years. And there's people that I know that have on and off been trying raw with an intention to go towards it for a long time, for years and years and years. 
And I, I think that you should think more about like a six month to one year transition. And this is how I think you should break up your transition process. The first thing that will be easy enough for you to do is to commit to um, raw food in the morning, raw food for breakfast. So you only eat raw, but I would say, keep it simple, eat fruit and maybe just one type of fruit. Eat fruit for breakfast. Now you could even take it a step before that, which is if you're coming from nowhere, which is you eat one piece of fruit before you eat breakfast. And this is the drip process, which I think is going to work for a lot of people a lot better than the jumping in the deep end process, which a lot of people think they can do. Very few people do. But the drip process, it allows you to gradually develop towards it. So you, you either eat one piece of fruit before your breakfast or you eat fruit for breakfast. But that's a, that could be a bit problematic for people because you have to replace what you would usually eat for breakfast. If you usually eat a massive breakfast and a small dinner at night and that's your pattern, then you're probably going to have to have a, a massive breakfast of, of fruit and, and that might not be easy for you at first. So you might want to start off with add, add, adding fruit to your breakfast, <laughs> add, maybe having fruit before your breakfast. Some simple ways of adding more fruit into your breakfast. Berries, you know, adding berries into your cereal or whatever. Having a glass of orange juice. Having a smoothie. These are quite simple things you can do. And the thing with fruit, you have to always be prepared. So you need to think a week ahead. You can't just go and know that you're going to always have fruit. So think a week ahead. You're going to start this transition process. And you want to have in your mind the next five or seven days and what you're going to eat for breakfast. And maybe picture that so that you're expecting it. So you're thinking, okay, I'm going to have watermelon for breakfast. Or I'm going to have, um, you know, bananas for breakfast, mango for breakfast. Just maybe a fruit salad for breakfast. Maybe a bunch of things. But what you don't want to do is have a tiny fruit breakfast, feel really hungry after that. So you might want to have a glass of orange juice or something. Or something that adds a bit more to it. You might want to do a smoothie. I think that would be the best thing, would be a smoothie for breakfast. And if you can do that, then you can maybe even make it the night before, which isn't a bad thing. It's not perfect, but it's not a bad thing. You can make it the night before and you can wake up and there's your smoothie there. So your breakfast is just done. So that's the first stage. Get used to fruit for breakfast. Embrace fruit for breakfast. And that will not take that long that you'll get used to that and you'll like that. The rest of the day you do what you like. Now, you might, here's a few things you might need to um, watch out for. You eat fruit for breakfast. You could get diarrhea. You could get digestive something or other. Some, you might get a little discomfort. You might get a thing called melon belly where you eat fruit maybe too fast. You get a bit of gas and it kind of causes some pain. You might get something like that. Um, if you're someone that's diabetic, if you eat a lot of fruit, you could get a you know a spike in your blood sugar. Um, and and it, you know the program would be a little bit different for a diabetic. And maybe the first stage of your diabetics is to go to a low fat cooked diet, stay away from low carb, that's not what you want to do, very low fat cooked diet, the first thing, um, and, and once your symptoms of diabetes or whatever are kind of going away, which shouldn't take long, which really shouldn't take long, then you can um, start upping the fruit a little bit after that, that's probably the best thing to do, but really the best thing to do is speak to someone specifically who's made that transition with type 2 diabetes. So, that would be the first thing. We're talking fruit for breakfast. The next wall is fruit for lunch. And that is 
tough. That is really tough. Most of you will be so used to lunch is um, a cooked meal, it's a warm meal, it's a salty, savoury meal. That is the, and that's the, the kicker right there. It's not really the warmth. People often say, I miss warm food. I don't think they're really missing the warm food. Because warm, flavourless food isn't that appealing. It's the flavours to me, it's the, and it's the salt a lot of the time that people are really missing. So, and maybe the textures and stuff like that. So, for me, that was a big challenge for me when I was trying to do this, which was, I was working in an office at the time, I would go for lunch and I would sit with my friends and I would usually get, um, it was probably vegetarian or veganish at the time, chips, beans, baked potato and beans, something like that, baked potato beans and maybe some kind of vegetarian thing along with it, like veggie sausages or something, I can't remember. That was like a perfect thing for me. That would have been a perfect meal for me right there. Um, and I can totally see the appeal in it. So don't get me wrong, but so for me to get to that point where I was giving that up for fruit as a lunch was really tough, and a lot, and, and that was a lot of back and forth. When I would do it, and then I would go back to eating the cooked lunch, and then I would do it another time, and it took a lot of discipline, like a lot of discipline, <laughs> to do ten bananas instead of this thing. But what I tried to focus on was how good I felt after eating the 10 bananas or the 8 bananas or whatever. And I, I just had to try and focus on that and, and, and how I looked and how I felt and the difference. And I knew there was a good difference. But still it felt like you're never going to you're never gonna get over that desire to eat the cooked food sort of thing. Um, I remember at that time... Funnily enough, at that time there was a shop I could go to, which it, which reopened recently actually, but under different management. It used to have ripe bananas in it, so I could literally go into this shop and buy ten ripe bananas for lunch. But sometimes what would happen is, I would buy them, take them to the back to my office, and they were all bashed. I didn't really think about think it through, so they were all like bashed and kind of slimy by that point. Um, so did that, but then I really came up with later on what was actually the best thing to do, which is to have your lunch prepared and have your breakfast prepared and try and get as many calories in, in the morning and at lunch as possible. What that does is it allows you to, it helps you make better decisions as the day goes on. A lot of people get to lunchtime and they're ravenous and because they've just had a tiny breakfast, they're absolutely ravenous. And they just can't help but having the cooked meal. They just can't help it. The, when I first went raw, I literally, for a very long period of time, I had my smoothie prepared, my big smoothie. Every day I had it prepared in the morning or maybe the night before. So I had it, I took it to work, and I had it, I had, maybe I took two smoothies and I put them in the fridge at work. And because they were banana smoothies, they looked terrible later on, but they tasted good. So they, you know, banana smoothie looks terrible after a little while. Um, and that's what I was doing. And that helped when I went home to make better decisions. But, the, but that's the first stage. No, stage number one, fruit for breakfast. Increase the fruit for breakfast. Number two, can you do that next stage of giving up the savoury you know, lunch. Step three, at that point you're kind of raw till four. <clears throat> but at that point you don't necessarily want to go 100% raw just yet. You don't necessarily. What you want to start to do is you're probably in a comfortable thing now where you've got your fruit for breakfast, you're getting used to eating more fruit, you've got your fruit for lunch, you're getting used to eating more fruit. And you're getting used to eating fruit for lunch, which is good. Now you just have your, your cooked dinner thing. What you want to do is start to simplify that, the, the cooked food in your life at this point. This is my suggestion to you. So you don't go, okay, I'm going to go 100% raw right now. 
Well, you could do that if it works for you. But I would suggest at this point, you look at what is your cooked meal. Like, let's say you have anything as long as it's vegan. Well, no, let's go, let's go beyond that. Let's say it's vegetarian. Or let's say it's a standard diet. Or let's say it's a, you know, whatever. You could have animal products. Well, what you want to start to do is eliminate down that diet to one ingredient eventually that's or, or a very small amount of ingredients so what i mean by that is if you're eating pizza for dinner like you have a vegan pizza or whatever or you have a vegan curry or you have a vegan something like that that you simplify that down um, and you can simplify that down in terms of the number of things that you're eating so instead of having you know a baked potato with rice and vegetables and this and that you might start to simplify it down to just the rice and vegetables or just the baked potato and vegetables so you start to simplify it down and usually what happens is you end up probably simplifying it down to potatoes so you're having potatoes with something maybe potatoes with vegetables or with a sauce what you also want to do and it depends where you are is you want to start eliminating some of the other things. It really depends on where your diet is. But you want to eliminate salt. I think. So, <laughs> um, one of the things that's going to draw you back to cook food a lot is a desire for salt. So I think that you should simplify down that meal and take away the things like the sauces, the... Uh, the, the salt that you're adding to it, take the salt out of the diet. Take the salt out. That will be a big, big transition. On its own, that will make a big difference. So you take the salt out, and I'm kind of jumping ahead because I'm assuming you don't have sugar anymore, but things like that you want to take out of your diet. Sugar. So what I'm saying here is you're at this point where you're starting to eliminate, but you've still got that cooked food meal to hold on to. You can hold on to that and give up the caffeine. You can hold on to that and give up the salt. You can hold on to that, give up the sugar, give up the vegan products. So you're simplifying your diet down. When you're doing this, you'll feel a tremendous difference. And all, all, all along this process, this transition process I'm talking about, your health and your body will be changing in ways you're, you won't even imagine. You know, how you feel, how you look, digestion, the way you're thinking, you're, everything is changing. Your confidence, it's, it's a beautiful process, right? Once you've simplified your diet down, that could take months in itself. So now you're down to fruit for breakfast, fruit for lunch, a very simple cooked dinner, and obviously fruit whenever you want it, vegetables as you want it. Um, then you want to gradually replace that cooked dinner with fruit, <laughs> with more fruit if you require it, and with um, salad. Now, at this point, you're used to eating fruit for breakfast. You're used to eating fruit for lunch. That's not a challenge. You're down to a really simple meal. Hopefully, you've cut out a lot of the condiments, the salts, the things like that. Um, and now, you're looking to give up the cooked food for good or, or for whatever period of the time you want to do it. But by this time, it's going to be easier to do it. Um... Well, it's, not going to, it's always hard to do it, but it's not going to be such a radical shift. Um, you've not got so many ad different addictions and things pulling at you. You should just be down to potatoes and, and a few things like that. So you're down to eating potatoes. Um, that's what I would recommend. You get down, simplify down to fruit, fruit, potatoes, fruit, and salad. You know, you can have salad whenever you like, really, but really at night. But it, the important thing is when you're going to go, right, I'm going to take out the potatoes. I'm going to take out the big cooked meal. 
This is where you have to be very critical about making sure you get enough calories. Now you have to really understand how many calories you need to make this work. So you need to be more committed to how much fruit you're eating. You have to make sure that you've got at least one big fruit meal, sweet fruit meal, um, that will give you that will give you enough. And for the transition to work, you're probably going to want to have um, a big salad at night because that will give you a little bit more of the sense of fillingness that you might miss out on. So that salad can be um, as big as you want it to be. but and, and if you want to have some fat in there, that's probably the time of day to have it a little bit later on. Not that it makes a, not makes a great difference, but I'm just saying as a transition process, that would be good. The other thing about the transition process is you might want to dive into the raw recipes at this point. Find the books that you like, Chris Kendall, Melissa Raimondi, Philly Rockstina, um, Food and Sport have books. Recipe books and find some replacement recipes for things that you love and try them out and some of them are really good. Some of them are really, really good. And you might not want to, and if you've got a raw restaurant in your city, that's another good place you might want to go to, just to help you out in this transition process. Um, and make a killer salad, just make an amazing salad. Make sure you've eaten enough fruit and you shouldn't be, that'll cut down on your cravings, but you will still crave the cooked food for a while. Doesn't matter what you say, you'll crave it. And you'll crave it even if you don't really want it. You're like, I don't really want it. I'll just have some anyway. It's weird things like that. That's when you really have to deal with your addictions. And I'll make a video about addictions because I don't think people understand addictions at all. But that's, so to me, this is the transition process. I really do think some transitional recipes raw recipes but transitional raw you can even make raw pizza you might want to get a dehydrator to do these things um you might want to try like the cauliflower wings those are great the avocado fries really easy things to make which will definitely mimic, mimic some of the flavors of cooked food and so on and then gradually when you're doing that you'll want to go back to just eating fruit because you'll start to enjoy that much much more. As time wears on you want to simplify everything about your diet. You want to be eating mono meals. You might even want to eat just one type of fruit for most of your most of a week. Um, and gradually some people will get their diet down to two meals a day, three meals a day or whatever but, but that seems to be the thing that some people do is the two meals a day. So to me, that is it's a half hour video, um, but I really, I don't feel like I've, I don't feel like I've wasted any time in this video. That really is the transition process that I think will work for a lot of people. Once you get to that cooked food elimination stage, you have to expect that it's gonna, you're gonna go back to it again and again. You have to expect that, and that's just gonna be a challenge. You're gonna have to continue to you know redefine your own goals and what you're trying to do and it takes a while it will take a while and that's when you have to go through all the addiction stuff and I'll talk about that in maybe in the next video but hopefully that is the process lined out for you fruit for breakfast eventually you're going fruit for lunch eventually you're going fruit before dinner if you need more fruit and a big salad and some raw recipes, the best raw recipes you can get, stuff that you enjoy, and uh, and just go for that. But it does take time. It's to me, it's a process. It's not really an overnight thing. So thank you very much for watching. If you got something out of this, leave some comments below. And um, you can get a free recipe book at fruitfest.co.uk if you want some recipes, and you can find out about the festival there if you'd like to do that. Uh, feel free to like this video and leave the notifications on. I think that helps you to see when the next video pops up if you want to see it. 
Thanks for supporting the channel. Any comments, leave them down below. Thank you.